Filing taxes is annoying. It involves keeping track of all of your yearly income and knowing how to put it down correctly and missing a few dollars could get you in some serious trouble. This is why more Americans each year turn to apps that promise to do taxes for you, like TurboTax, Tax Slayer, and... Dating simulators? When I found out there was a free-to-play visual novel that does your taxes, I needed to know more. So, as foxes do, I dug a bit deeper. I downloaded and played one of the strangest games I've ever stumbled upon, Tax Heaven 3000. And trust me, you'll want to stick around for this one. For me, it all started with a simple tweet. It's actually the first thing I ever hearted on Twitter because it was just so fucking hilarious. I thought it was fake. It's such a stupid concept. The tweet links to a Steam page that got taken down for some reason. Hmm, I wonder why. But it's easy to find the link to the official Tax7 3000 website elsewhere. We're greeted with a lot of information and lethal levels of pink, but square in your vision is an anime woman. Meet Iris, the love interest of the game. The website says she's a cheerful, assertive girl. And she's filing singly this year. Oh my god. There's gonna be a lot of jokes like this, by the way, her name is even upon. The website claims she files your 1040 form, searches for deductibles, and that the game has multiple endings. Wait, does that mean you can get audited in this game? To really, just really sell you on the deal, the website used to offer a bundle, including the game, the box, and a body pillow of Iris. Now, at this point in the research, I was hooked. Hell, the creators were so committed to this, there exists Wattpad fanfictions focusing on Iris's love life. If you saw my last video, which chances are you did, you know shitty fanfics are my weakness. Before I visited the download page though, one question was just stuck in my mind. Who, who would make this? A simple search online shows the game was made by a company named MSCHF. That's mischief without the vowels. I'd never heard of mischief before investigating, but They've been around. Remember the stupid big red boot trend thing from a year ago? Guess who sold that? As it turns out, the company is dedicated to making small, comedic, but oddly impressive products like Tax Heaven. These are called drops, and there have been 94 of them since 2019. I love these things, and reading a list of them really gives you a feel as to the vibe the company's going for. Chair Simulator. Eat the Rich Popsicles. Only Bags, which sold only the bags from prestigious stores. Sunday Service, which was Chick-fil-A, but just on Sundays. The Ultimate Participation Trophy. Big Fruit Loop. And my personal favorite, the ATM Leaderboard. The only place where you can flex your deposits. Of course, with a resume like this, a dating simulator that does your taxes is completely normal for them. All that did was make me even more excited to report my taxable income to a digital girl. So, I think it's time we download the game, and in both ways, check our eligibility. Holy shit. Okay, let's do this. So the game, hold on, wait, let me set the mood. Ooh, yeah, much more romantic. Anyways, before opening the game, I realized that there was kind of a little bit of a problem. I, I don't pay taxes. I'm 17. That's a pretty big issue considering the game revolves around income. So how did I fix this? Fraud. I'm just gonna take fake information from online and put that in for my information. Trust me, I don't plan on giving my actual information to someone with rose colored hair. And with all of that out of the way, my journey begins. <sighs> After showing the game's trailer, the title screen greets us with the logo, the girl, some cheesy music, and three buttons. Quit, settings, and most importantly, new game. Instantly upon opening the game, it prompts you for your full legal name, to which I thought, should I, should I put this? I, I mean, I go by my actual name online, Red Woods, but do I really need to put Redmond? Ugh, it's such a lame name, that's why I don't go by it. But still, I decided to play along, and I also put my middle initial because if they dox me at this point, I don't really care. After that, the stage is set. You've just leased and moved into a brand new apartment. After walking around your new city and entering a small shop to buy a pencil, you bump into Iris. Oh, I'm, I'm already reconsidering this. To be honest, I'm not exactly the type for dating simulators. They make me feel creepy, and I just don't enjoy visual novels. But just like how I'm not the type to write fanfiction either, I'm not here for the novel. I'm here for the strangeness. So, this is gonna be pretty weird for me. Let's continue. You have a small discussion and share names, instantly making me regret using my full name. And this is when the tax form questions start rolling in. Yes, Iris, I'm an American citizen. Why would I be playing this if I wasn't? She gives the pencil and invites you for coffee tomorrow at 1230. And just like that, the sparks are already flying after quite literally two minutes of gameplay. But then, at 4 a.m., you realize, oh fuck, you didn't do your taxes. The next day, you enter a coffee shop to meet your future tax filer. You sit down in the cafe with the IRS, I mean, Iris, and another question pops up concerning your marital status. <laughs> Why would she ask me about my marital status? <laughs> That's such a weird question. 
I'm, I'm single. The questions continue. If I have any children or relatives I need to pay for, my fucking birthday, which I decided I now share with Jeremiah 985 and what form of income I receive. There's one tiny problem with that question. I don't have income. The only income I receive is hard cash, so I'll have to get crafty. A W-2 form is a little thing your employer gives you that shows your income and taxes at that job for the past year. Whereas a 1099 is the same thing, but from someone you aren't employed by. Because the W-2 is the most common, I just put that one. Right after this, Iris keeps hitting on you. And we get to know a bit of Iris lore. She works at the library and keeps a notebook of literally everything that happens around her. Literally me. But apparently the library books also taught her about basic shit you kind of just learn by existing, like family and love. My suspicion right now is that she's a robot installed by the government to steal information. Much like this game. The protagonist doesn't seem to mind hanging at a library though. Actually, he's pretty receptive to all of this weird stuff, so his standards must be lower than low. She then asks if I own or trade crypto. What the fuck is that answer? What? And my phone number. I'm, I'm way too deep into this now, aren't I? I just went with the classic Saul Goodman phone number, and when she asked for my email, I just gave up and put my actual YouTube email. If I get spam mail after this, it's entirely my fault. And just as it's begun, that's the end of date one. On the third day, we finally got some gameplay. You can choose where to go now, and I debated trolling Iris by going to the coffee shop, but whatever, I'll buy it. When you go to the library, Iris is absent, but her notebook sits idly on her desk, asking to be opened. I decided to open it because I'm a creep, and honestly... I think she's even more creepy. She has a segment in her book dedicated to journaling her life to the last detail. Literally me. And a section with all of the personal information we've given to this point? Imagine being silly and opening your crush's diary and your fucking personal information is scrawled there in purple ink. She has your last name listed as Cafe because she doesn't remember. So the game prompted me to retype Woods. By extension, we learned that the notebook is just a game mechanic to update your information if anything seems off. We receive a text from her saying that she had something to do and forgot we existed. So we'll have to come back to the library tomorrow. Also, her phone number is shown here. And, out of curiosity, I googled the number to see if it was real. Turns out, it is! Also turns out, it's for Turganuja in Missouri. So, definitely not Iris. Tomorrow comes and you get to choose where the date is this time. I chose the office because we haven't seen that yet. But oh shit! The photocopier's broken and apparently we have to fix it! Don't worry Iris, the school library prepared me for this. Fuck, never mind. This looked a bit too high level for me, and Iris was really pressuring me to do something, so I knew what I had to do. I phoned one of my friends, who's good at coding. Yo? Hi, uh, I need your help immediately. Uh, sure. Okay, so ready? I'm, I'm hacking into a photocopier, I, it, there's a terminal, and it says type a command, and I need to put something. Immediately. Okay, like in a specific language, or...? I just, I need to put something immediately. That's what it's telling me. I need your help. Uh... uh like, anything? Anything, anything. I just need something, please. I'm gonna embarrass myself. Um, put the word orange cube in. Orange cube? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I typed orange cube repeatedly really fast, and... It worked! I fixed it! Iris was really impressed! Thanks, comp site friend, I can always count on you for stupid shit. After that whole situation, Iris asks if I have multiple W-2 forms, to which I said I have one. And then she asked me to... upload it. That's a bit of a problem, considering I don't even have one. But no worries, I guess it's time for some forgery. What am I doing? And with that, I now make $5 million. That would get me into a lot of trouble in real life. Please don't do that. Afterwards, she asked you about some information on the form, which relieved me because I felt the game would actually need to interpret that stupid PDF. So when I put in my information, she told me that my employer was taking $300,000 more than they should be. Eh, probably nothing. She asked me if I had any side hustles. I guess YouTube, but that's a hobby and also giving me nothing right now, so no. I make no money from interest because I'm not one of those Wall Street bets redditors. I have no social security benefits because I'm not even an adult yet. And I get no compensation for being unemployed. <sighs> All that forgery was tiring. Luckily though, Iris says we're done for the day. And she also gets really defensive after mentioning that you should never use tax filing apps like TurboTax. Whatever, not my problem. Date two is done. I went to the coffee shop to unwind and oh my God. God damn, dude. Listen, you didn't hear it from me, but if I had to choose the love interest. Anyways, I got some water because I'm basic and I got something for Iris as well because robots need pumpkin spice too. She didn't comment on my nice gesture though. She actually just asked me for my address, which I'm choosing to say is the White House. And, uh-oh, she's asking about my job. What, what kind, kind of job, job would have a salary of $5 million? Dollars? Golf ball diver. I'm not legally blind and my social security number is my... Wait, I get why she's asking this, but what the fuck? Who would actually punch their social security number into a game? That's really important information. Giving that away can compromise your identity permanently. 
three. I just put in a ton of threes, but I'd be lying if I said I was comfortable reading what's your social security number. Day three is complete and we're off to the library. I read through some of my information again and Oh my god, it's hilarious. By the way, golf ball diver is an actual job. They're the people who dive into ponds and lakes to retrieve golf balls, and they make like $52,000 a year. Anyways, she told me I make so much money that I don't qualify for any special deductions, so I'm kind of regretting this whole 5 million a year thing. And because I don't own anything, I can't really take an itemized deduction either. So pretty much all I'm saving is 13,000 on my $1 million bill. And then she asks if we could meet in her room. Wait, what? Okay, so apparently this has all been going so well that she is head over heels for us now? I was genuinely so scared of what was gonna happen, but I guess it was all worth it for the content. I went over her house and, well, she had something to tell me. We went over our information together again, one last time. Redmond Woods, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, golf ball diver. Sitting there, scrolling through, we had a connection. It was weird and oddly financial, but it all worked out. We're here together now. And it turns out I got 122,000 refunded. She sat and held my hand and her last words to me were simple. I want you to be in my life in the future. Maybe we'll even file a joint return one day. <laughs> the credits rolled and everything was perfect. Okay, on a serious note, that was weird, and I never thought I would experience anything like that in my life. But it worked. I'm really surprised by how comprehensive that was. I looked through the document Iris had me download at the end, and everything seemed to check out. The form, the information, the little page at the beginning that gives you a vocab list. Against all odds, this joke product from a company known for parody is a valid way to do your taxes. Welcome to 2024, I guess. Well, 2022, I should say. This is only valid for income made in that year. But I'm actually a little embarrassed by how much that taught me outside of school. And I guess that's kind of the point. Taxes are a complicated process, as with a lot of things in the real world. But they're not impossible to learn. Listen, we already live in a time where we're forced to do boring work for a wage, where fun isn't discouraged but still isn't common, and where mental health is a large cultural focus. Sometimes we need to take the time and make the boring, routine processes of life a bit more exciting to keep our spirits up. That's what the developers of the game did. It may be unconventional and kind of weird, but it's functional, memorable, in a pretty good time. The future lies with creative people who can communicate information in a way that hasn't been done before, no matter what that info might be. They might be seen as weird or deviant by others, but when those same people need to file their taxes and they can't understand other convoluted sources, maybe they'll check you out. See you later. Peace.